This is Joe with JoesAstrophoto.com. Today we're going to be running a test in PixInsight to see when in your workflow you should be running the dynamic background extraction. First thing we're going to do is open up our images that we're going to work with. And I'm only going to open up the blue, green, and red uh, because we're not interested in the luminance for this particular test. And we'll get rid of the highs and lows. And we'll do our screen stretch on each one. Next, we're going to do a dynamic crop to make sure that nothing intro is introduced that might throw off our test. So I think we'll grab this about here. And we'll apply this to the other images so that they're all identical. And we can close this. And the first thing I want to do is make a clone of each one of these so that we can continue to use these as our masters. Oops, go away. Okay, now let's roll these up and move them out of the way real quick. And let's grab our masters. We'll start with blue. What we're going to do is we're going to use um, the dynamic background extraction tool. And we're going to set it up so that we don't have to set it up every single time. But we're going to have to start with one. So we're going to apply this to each of our, of our three filters with the same settings. I'm going to use a 2 for tolerance and a 6 for relaxation. And we're going to use a sample radius of 150 and 10 samples per row. Let's generate the mask and now we're going to drag this out so that we can continue to use this and not have to put these numbers back in again. So real quick, I'm going to come through here and delete the points that I do not want. And really what I'm doing is I'm only using the outside points. Okay, and actually now I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to delete this one so I don't get confused later. And now I don't have to delete the points every time. Okay, so the first thing is to do a division. We're going to discard the background and replace the target image. Um, we can reset the screen stretch if we'd like. We're going to close this because <clears throat> when doing them at the same time, it introduces weird artifacts, I've noticed. Not every time, but sometimes. And I don't want to introduce a weird artifact during our test. So we've done our division. Now we're going to do a subtraction. Same settings. OK, close this. And then we're going to do it on red. We just did blue. Let's do red. And that's why I made this so that I can just keep opening it and applying these real quick. So we're going to do a division. Reset our screen stretch just so I could see what it's doing. Close this. 
open it again, but this time we're going to do a subtraction. All right, close this. And bring in our green. We're going to do division first. Open it again and do our subtraction. Okay, we're all done. We'll open up the LRGB combination and let's see, we got green. We'll combine these. Red goes here, blue goes here, and we'll just click off of luminance for now. And we'll run it with defaults. And we'll do a stretch. And we get this image. And it looks like we need to run the process one more time. But for now, we're just going to leave this the way it is. We're going to minimize these and get them out of the way. And we're going to open these up again. And we're going to clone them again. Actually, we don't need to clone these because what we can do, the second part of the test to compare the two is to do another um, RGB. So we'll put these in the red here, the green in this box, the blue in the blue box. We'll apply that. We'll look at our image. That's what we figure we should have. Let's um, let's roll these back up out of the way. And now we'll open up our dynamic background extraction that we've saved the settings for. We'll start with the division. Apply that. Let's reset the screen stretch. Let's close this. Let's reopen it. This time we'll do a subtraction. We'll close that. So here's the difference. Here's here's what the image looks like if you do the dynamic background extraction after you do your RGB combination or before. And actually, if we run another dynamic background extraction on this image, our before image, let's do a division. Close that. One more time, and we'll do a subtraction. And now we'll reset the screen stretch. And we've pretty much got the same image. However, I kind of like the our before image a little bit more. It's got a little bit more, uh, the sky's a little blacker, there's a little bit darker colors. However, uh, if we could do the same thing after, we haven't stretched these yet, and as soon as you stretch them, I have a feeling that they're going to be an awful lot alike, if not identical anyway. I mean, they're almost identical to begin with. 
So based on our test results, we can conclude that it's probably more beneficial for you to run your dynamic background extraction after you've combined your LRGB images. There are a few caveats to this, however. If you are imaging on different nights with different filters, uh, the moon brightness may change, or depending on where you're imaging from, you might have a different level of light pollution from one night to the other, in which case you would probably want to run a separate dynamic background extraction on each layer. I hope this has been helpful, and if it has, please leave a like, especially if you're interested in more videos like this, and please hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.